Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, who has come back to life, fortunately. So uh, I did a couple videos on 5G and Wi-Fi and health effects and that sort of thing. I mentioned that you can actually turn down the power, the transmit power of your Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi access point, Wi-Fi box, let's call it. And several people wrote and said, hey, how do you do that? And I wasn't gonna make a video about that because each of these boxes is different. Uh, this is a, a TP-Link Archer C2. Um, there's a whole bunch of other makes and models and you know different manufacturers and stuff. Um, so I wasn't going to make a video about this because you have to log into the web interface and sometimes the option isn't there. Usually it is, but it's going to be in a different location. And obviously I can't do a review of like every single Wi-Fi box in existence. but. Then after so many people asked me, I thought, okay, well, let me just go ahead and, and show how it's done on mine. And that'll give you enough of an idea that if you want to turn the transmit power of your Wi-Fi down on your own Wi-Fi box, you can. Um, one thing to note is that if you have, if you're getting your Wi-Fi from your internet service provider's box, very often they have like an external Wi-Fi button on the box itself, a physical button, and you press that and you get Wi-Fi on, you press it again, you get Wi-Fi off. That's it. If you log into the web interface and you try to like adjust the transmit power, very frequently there isn't an option, and the reason for that is because they know that most people are going to want one box and it covers their whole house, so they just don't they just don't program in into the firmware, they don't program in the option to lower the power. Um, in that case, what you can do is actually use an Ethernet cable and buy a, a cheapy Wi-Fi box like this one, turn the Wi-Fi on your box off, connect one of these guys up with an Ethernet cable, and then you'll be able to log in with your computer and lower the transmit power on this guy, and you simply won't use the Wi-Fi on your, your ISP-provided box. Uh, but in any case, if you have a Wi-Fi router like this guy, um, I'm going to show you the general way that you can go and hack the thing. So let's take a peek. So what we're going to do is most of the time you're going to go to one of two different addresses. First, you, obviously your computer has to be connected to your Wi-Fi box, right? So you connect it via Ethernet, via Wi-Fi itself, whatever, and then preferably via Ethernet actually. And then you're going to go to usually one of two addresses. Uh, those two addresses are open up your browser, go to 192.168.0.1. Sometimes it's 192.168.1.1. If neither of these work, you can look in the manual for your Wi-Fi box. Um, if it didn't come with a printed manual, just go to the manufacturer's website, look up the model number, and you can always download it as a PDF. So on my Wi-Fi box, it's 192.168.0.1. And there you go. Now you have your TP-Link AC750, also known as the Archer C2. You have your login page here. Uh, I've set a custom password. This is actually another reason why you want to log into the web interface. Uh, I'm just going to type in my password here. And so there you go. Now we're in. Um, one of the things you're going to want to do is go to, usually it's something like system or system tools or quick setup, and you're going to want to actually change the default password for your box. Usually, again, you can find this in the manual, usually the login is admin and the password is ad admin. Uh, sometimes the password is blank, usually it's admin admin. Again, change the password, uh, increases security, and there you go. Once you're logged in, you're just going to look through this section over here and you see there's like a ton of settings. So. Um, we're going to go to, looks like, here's a, a good bet, wireless 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, how about that? You can change things like the mode, you can change the channel. Sometimes that's handy if there's interference, you can change the channel width. There's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. Um, what we're going to do is go to wireless advanced. And then here you see we have a little pull down menu labeled transmit power. This transmit power beacon interval RTS threshold and usually over here on the right it'll actually tell you what all these things are. So we see with transmit power it says here you can specify the transmit power of the router. You can select high, middle, or low which you would like. Translated from Chinese obviously. <laughs> high is the default setting and is recommended of course because everyone wants to put one box and have it cover their whole house. But as you can see here 
instead of the default of high, I have actually set mine to low. And then I just click save, and it's going to do this little loady loady thing. Da -da 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 -da. And when it's done, boom, the transmit power of my 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi from that box is now low. So then I come over here to wireless 5 gigahertz since this is a dual band router. And I'm going to go again and go uh, look through all the options and go, how about wireless advanced? And here again, I've already done it, but there you go. Transmit power, set it to low, save, and Bob's your uncle. You're pretty much done. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of it. Not, uh, not too difficult, huh? So, yeah, that wasn't so hard, right? Um, as I said again, you're going to want to actually log in. Um, you're going to want to change the default admin password. You, you search around. I mean, like in this one, as you saw, it was like wireless 2.4 gigahertz. It could be labeled Wi-Fi. Um, not all boxes have this. You may have to check the manual. Uh, if you buy a new one, then you may want to actually download and check the manual before you buy it to make sure that you can actually lower the power. Generally speaking, I find that... Um, Actually, every Wi-Fi router or access point that I've ever owned, you can change the transmit power on, now that I think about it. And if you don't need Wi-Fi covering like your entire house, if you have one room or you know, a couple rooms where you're using it most often, say downstairs and upstairs, uh, you don't really use the Wi-Fi, well then lower the power level, better for your health. And um, the lower the power level, uh, also the, the less the range is, right? So the higher the power level, the higher the range. And that's actually also a, a security consideration because, uh, as you know, you can, you know, you can probably drive through a neighborhood and just take your phone and turn the Wi-Fi on. And as you're driving down the road, you can pick up everybody's Wi-Fi networks. Now, of course, hopefully they're secured with uh, a very solid password or preferably WPS, the Wi-Fi protected setup, the push button thing. Um, but still... Uh, the lower the power, the lower the range, and the less likely it is someone is going to hack you, which is relatively important because there was a recent news story about how all these Wi-Fi routers out of the box are horribly insecure and blah, blah, blah. So it's actually just, it's good practice to lower the Wi-Fi transmit power for your health, for security, and, you know, if you don't need massive coverage, just lower it down and there you go. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, it was pretty simple. If you have any questions, I probably can't answer specific questions about your specific Wi-Fi box because I probably don't have one. Um, but if you have any other questions, post them in the comments. And yeah, I guess that's it. So for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.